think we're ready. So from its founding, as you've already heard this morning, Annapolis has been committed to providing the highest quality classical Christian education that trains young leaders to uphold and champion our core values of truth, goodness, and beauty. After 21 years, by God's grace, the vision and the mission of Annapolis is stronger than ever. This morning, as we gather to celebrate the vital link between the generation that has gone before and this present generation, we commemorate yet another historic milestone in what God is doing at Annapolis and in our community. From the first day, Annapolis opened its doors to 99 students in 1995. Until our present moment today, Annapolis has remained committed to offering a complete, holistic, PK, all the way through 12th grade educational experience. It has not always been easy. There have been many who have questioned the validity of even trying to do that, uh, offering particularly the high school portion of that mission. But Annapolis's commitment to operating a high school is a direct expression of the founder's conviction that God's command for Christian parents to train their children up in the way that they should go does not stop at junior high, only to be taken up by the local government-run secular public school system at the most crucial time of their lives when students are forming their distinctive ideas and identities. It's not popular to say this, but the truth of the matter is that, there, that any school system that ignores God teaches its students to ignore God. And this is not neutrality. It is the worst form of antagonism for it judges God to be unimportant and irrelevant in our lives. This is atheism. Here's the bottom line, folks. Our current K-12 education system of national public education is the most efficient and widespread instrument for the propagation of practical atheism the world has ever seen. That is why we must never give up on our high school kids. We must commit ourselves to their proper training and their proper discipleship. The future of our nation depends on the faithfulness of previous generations to raise our children and our grandchildren in the godly fear and admonition of the Lord. We have a bold and a distinctive vision for our high school students, that they would be faithful, articulate, bold warriors for Christ, that they would be sound thinkers possessing a biblical world and life view, and that they would be equipped with the kind of education that prepares them for leadership and active citizenship. It is in service to this vision and this mission that we commemorate this day, the beginning of a glorious endeavor to build the state-of-the-art Jack L. Carter School of Rhetoric and the Sports and Recreation Quad. The School of Rhetoric will be 18,000 square feet, and it will be named in honor of my grandfather, Annapolis' founding headmaster, Jack L. Carter, a man who has devoted his entire adult life to Christian education and discipleship in our community. This building will be the final crowning destination for Annapolis students entering those critical high school years. The design will match the beauty of the original architect, neo-Gothic architecture on our campus, but it will reflect modern 21st century learning priorities such as collaborative learning spaces, integrated technology, observational science labs, research libraries, faculty and administration work spaces and offices. Similarly, the 30,000 square foot sports and recreation center will accommodate over 100 students at a given time. It will include multi-sport courts for basketball, volleyball, tennis, foursquare, hopscotch, my favorite, gaga ball. I didn't even know what gaga ball was, but our students love gaga ball. We'll have an 800 square foot covered pavilion for outdoor classes, concerts, and more. We are very excited to take this next step of faith to build the future of Annapolis together. I've asked my grandfather, Jack Carter, to say a prayer as we begin our groundbreaking here.
Father, through Jesus Christ, the great High Priest, King of kings and Lord of lords, we come to you by the blood of the eternal covenant, by the grace that you have so graciously extended to us. I thank and praise you for your works, O Lord. They are varied, they are, they are many, they are powerful. There are things that only you can do. And having begun a good work, I know that you are overseeing this good work and will bring it to a large, large conclusion. I thank you for all who are here today. Father, let your good hand rest upon every family, every child, every one who is here today, that they shall know that they are a part of your plan and your purposes and are participating in the work of the advance of the kingdom of God. And so we bless your people today. In the name of Jesus, our King, we do it. Amen. 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 Would you please join me, all of us together, I want to hear it loud and proud, <laughs> students, let's sing the doxology, parents, grandparents, I'll lead it, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. some dirt and Baking um, ceremony. Um, if you are related to Jack Carter, please stay for a photo op. Um, the rest of us uh, can go to our respective areas. Again, if you have a preschool through first grade student, your area is going to be the cafeteria. If you have a second through sixth grade student.